Thanks, Casey. You might remember a few years back, we did a survey, a very simple email survey of our audience that asked one simple question. What does the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival mean to you? And our patrons had a chance to respond, and all of their responses are available on our website. One of my favorite of which is culture comes alive at PSF. It's an opportunity to elevate my family's expectations of what life can be. We have been elevating our own expectations at PSF of late. The strategic plan is uh, reaching a crescendo. I shared some details at the meeting we had back in the spring, and the board will vote on this plan on November 4th, which is interesting because that's also the night of game seven. <laughs> but I have faith that that won't be an issue because of course the Phillies are gonna take it in six. So if we're going to accomplish some of these goals in our strategic plan, world-class work, drawing people from further away, we will need to do a few things differently. But first, let, let's take a second to just celebrate 20 years. Father Schubert, look what you did. <laughs> we have so much to celebrate, over 100 productions. A book called Majestic Vision of the Lee Butts photos of those, 20, those 19 seasons is, uh, is nearing completion. Over half a million patrons served, filled up on soul food. That's another thing one of those patrons said in, the, uh, in their response. Of course, we celebrate Shakespeare. 23 of Shakespeare's plays have been produced at the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival, and this season, the 24th. We celebrate the support we've had from DeSales University, the leadership of our board, and the support from the Guild, and the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that you have given to make this thing work. We celebrate the industry-leading artists that we have every year at the festival and will continue to have. We celebrate the opportunity to train tomorrow's artists through our internship program. And if you think back to some of the folks who have been here who are now getting Emmy nominations and uh, had their own television shows and are working across the, the, the nation in some of the better theaters in this country and on Broadway, uh, it, that's pretty exciting. We celebrate the inspiration, as we just did, that we, we derive daily from our founder. And the opportunity to serve this community in a way that no other organization does. And I'll come back to that point in just a moment. But you might be curious about just what the 20th anniversary season will be. Let me share that. Hamlet will be directed by me. Pride and Prejudice will be directed by Aaron Hurley. Where are you, Aaron? Okay, so there you are. The Comedy of Errors will be directed by Russell Trays, who was also here in the first season directing, and many in between. And we will also produce a wonderfully romantic musical by Rodgers and Hammerstein. I can't tell you which one it is right now. <laughs> because of a funny little quirk in the licensing agreement, because there's a tour of this out now in the world. So on February 1st, I can tell you the title, but it's a wonderfully romantic Rodgers and Hammerstein musical. <laughs> we'll leave it at that for now. And then Shakespeare's The Two Noble Kinsmen. Now, if you've been doing the math, you'll note that we normally do four major productions in our seasons. I just named five plays. What's up with that? <laughs> and of course we'll do children's plays, we'll do Sleeping Beauty, and we'll do Shakespeare for Kids again. So let me walk you through how this is going to work this year, because there are a number of things that are a little different. that are a part of the beginnings of where we're headed. 
So we'll open the season, talking about the major productions now, we'll open the season actually with that wonderfully romantic Rodgers and Hammerstein musical <laughs> on the main stage. Then we'll open the Comedy of Errors in the Schubert Theater. So, so far, that sounds like, you know, the way we do things, though usually we open the Schubert first. Well, there's a reason that we have to open the main stage first this year. That's because Hamlet and Pride and Prejudice will be in rep with the same company of actors, which means that the second main stage show will be Hamlet on Tuesday and Pride and Prejudice on Wednesday and Hamlet on Thursday and Pride and Prejudice on Friday with the same company of actors. So the Elizabeth Bennet will probably be the Ophelia and you can imagine the rest from there. Producing productions in rep is one of the keys to going where we're headed because if we want people to be able to come from a little further away and stay overnight a night or two and enjoy the B&Bs and enjoy the wonderful restaurants in the area and the wonderful scenic beauty and all the opportunities, we need to be able to provide them with multiple plays to see in a single visit, which they can do some of now, but they'll be able to do more of now. And this is a way for us to test drive this model. Now, if those two are happening in the main stage, and it's literally still the same three-week three run, which, by the way, will also mean that the houses will be full pretty much every night. Because where there were 20 performances of Hamlet before, now there are 12, and there are 12 of Pride and Prejudice. So that wonderful experience you have when you come to the festival and the house is packed, we'll have that pretty much every night now in that second main stage slot. So then you may have noticed that there's some space over there in the Schubert Theater in the second slot of the season. And we wanted to do something special for the 20th anniversary season, something to celebrate Shakespeare, the festival, something that would capture the imagination. So what we're going to do We've called it a number of different things, but we've landed, for the moment at least, on Shakespeare Untamed. We also called it Hit and Run Shakespeare and Shakespeare in the Raw, Shakespeare in the Rough, all sorts of things. But we've landed on Shakespeare Untamed right now, where the actors take charge. You see, when, from what we know about how Shakespeare's company really did this, they didn't have three and a half weeks of rehearsal, which we think tends, tends to be not as much as we'd like. They learned their lines, they came in, they figured out where to stand, and they did the play. So this company of actors will do it the way Shakespeare's company did it. They'll come in with their lines learned. They'll have two or three days to fight over who gets to stand where. They will wear whatever the heck they want to wear and whatever they can find, which is also the way Shakespeare's company did it, as far as we know. And they will open in front of an audience on pure adrenaline and spontaneity. And this is an Elizabethan kind of experience, right? This is an immediate kind of experience. This is only going to run for two weeks, so it's going to be hard to get a ticket to this thing. But there's an excitement and an energy to, do, to, to doing this the way Shakespeare's company did it. One more veil will fall in the interaction between audience and actor. So an experience with art is an encounter for us, right, between subject and object. And this approach to Shakespeare hopefully will bring us even more directly into relationship with the art object, which is the performance of this play. So that's the season. I borrow from Roger Scruton when I say that when we do this together, the guild, the artists, the staff, the board, the patrons, the producer circle, the donors, we feel an enhanced sense of belonging. Not only because we are interacting with each other, but because we are interacting, interacting directly with art and with beauty. It's as if our experience of this encounter is that a world that makes room for such things as Shakespeare, 
also makes room for us. So I'll close with a little Hamlet. Hamlet says, I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. And indeed, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire, why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. So in that, Hamlet is having an experience that we all know, which is that we know that the world is an incredibly beautiful place and that humanity is filled with beauty. And yet that on a daily basis, we fall out of connection with that for one reason or another. We know it's there, and we can't touch it. What you do, what we do together, connects those dots again for an audience. That inspiration that slips from us, that hope, and the irony, the almost mockery of knowing how beautiful the world is, but falling out of touch with it. Doing this, doing art, doing Shakespeare, helps connect those dots again for our patrons. In the 20th anniversary season, Shakespeare comes of age. This is a majestic vision. The future starts here, and I'm so glad you'll be with us. Thank you.